episode five from season three, arguably one of the best episodes, if not the best episode I've seen. Who touched me? Everybody back. back, back. She was kind of an outcast amongst the people, right? Her father disowned her. Like this was a really serious issue that she that she was dealing with. And in the same way, when we place our faith in Jesus, that there's a spiritual healing that happened, and it's even better than just Bruce Lawn. The beautiful part about this is how much directly this is from the scriptures. And I got one Bible verse that's going to glue all of this together. This is episode five from season three, arguably one of the best episodes, if not the best episode I've seen. And I don't want to spoil it for you because you really should go watch it. Watch it on the Chosen app. Watch it on the Angel Studios app. This episode was phenomenal. This episode was incredible. I want to jump into this scene. This scene, one of the most powerful scenes, Jesus is headed to heal a young girl who died. And in the midst of this, he gets encountered by the woman with the issue of blood. Okay, now we're going to look at two passages. And, 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 and again, the beautiful part is how accurate this was to the actual scriptures in Matthew, excuse me, in Mark 5. And then I got another passage that's going to glue it all together. So just stay with me, okay? Rabbi, it's, him. it's your rabbi. Stay here. A rabbi has a pressing matter ahead. Promise you come back and see Stay back, stay back, everyone. No, no, no. Please, no. Oh, no. At this point, they've heard of Jesus's ministry. They've heard that he's been doing miracles. She's heard of his ministry. She encounters the disciples. They were actually going to bring her to Jesus. You know, Jesus is now going to heal this other thing. And so... Yeah. <laughs> Just Peter, and Andrew. One thread. It's just a fringe. One touch. One thread. One thread. Just, just the edge. Only a thread. You! I know you. Get away from him. Stop it, please. Rabbi Yussi! She was cleaning laundry. She was doing laundry for people, and he and she was cleaning his laundry in an earlier episode. And he saw that she was ceremonially unclean, and is now exposing her in the middle of the situation. Rabbi Yussi, this woman bleeds. She is unclean. We removed her. Please, please, I, I promise I won't touch him. I, I just need. Oh, woman, to... please, we can help you, but not now. Everybody back. back, back. <laughs> They're like trying to play security. That's not what Jesus is talking about. I asked the question. Who touched me? Master, the crowds are pressing in all around you like this, and you're asking who touched you? They all have. Someone touched me. I felt that power went out of me. She's horrified at this point, because remember, she's unclean. Whoever touched me, come forward. Teacher. It was me. Just the fringe of your garment, only the edge, I promise. You are not unclean. Why my garment? I'm sorry. I know I should have asked. 
But if if you touched me, it would make you ritually unclean according to the law. Uh, I was sick. I was sick for 12 years. I bled and, and, and no one could stop it. But but I believed if I could just touch a piece of your garment. <laughs> I was right. I was right. Thank you. So they spend a good amount of time driving home exactly how serious this was, right? How uh, she was kind of an outcast amongst the people, right? Her father disowned her. Like, this was a really serious issue that she, that she was dealing with here. Who told you I could heal? A man from the pool. <laughs> that's, so that in this story, that's Simon the Zealot's brother. That uh, the man, the man at the pool in Bethesda, is that how you say That's that? That's right. The blood is seized. My daughter. I'm no one's daughter anymore. Look up. Yes, you are. Sheesh! Daughter. It wasn't my piece of clothing that healed you. But it was instant. I felt it right away. I know. But it wasn't this. It was your faith. Teacher, she was bleeding so long, we can take her. She is clean. <sighs> you have blessed me today. And I know. My daughter, I know it has been a fight for you for so long. Hmm. You must be exhausted. Go now in peace. Your faith has made you well. I wish I could stay here longer. But I have business to attend to. Someone else has faith like yours. I'm so glad that we found each other. Watch how he hands with this crowd. This is so cool. Please, I promise I will speak to all of you soon. And my students and I will care for your needs. But right now, there's something very important that I must do. And I kindly ask you to let me go so I can take care of this urgent issue. I promise I will see you, but right now is not possible. Thank you for your understanding. Sheesh, man. Wow, what a scene. Again, amazing job by Dallas. But so I want to look at the, the, the description because there's a word here that, that's so interesting that, that stands out to me, right? Okay, so this is in Mark chapter 5. So this is the actual scripture, and they, and you know, for as much pushback as the chosen gets, like some of this stuff is, they, they really do follow the narratives well. Um, so this is Mark chapter 5, verse 30. It says, And Jesus perceived in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, this is the part, I, I, I didn't remember that he used this exact language. They used it almost word for a daughter. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Right? While he was still speaking, there came the ruler's son who said, you're and so that's the second part of the story. So this entire chapter, they almost the whole episode is almost dedicated to it. Now, I want to parallel this to another chapter um, in Romans chapter 8. It says, So then, brothers, we are not debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you, uh, by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all, verse 14, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. 
For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God, for you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Now, that word Abba, this is closer to daddy, right? And I know some of you guys would be weirded out, like if somebody was like, you know, uh, dear daddy, right? <laughs> it's like, tell they get baby Jesus, which you pray for, right? But that's that, that, like, that word is a very sentimental uh, word for God, right? For whom we cry, Abba, Father. And then this is this is a beautiful part, verse 16. Romans 8, verse 16. Some of you guys should memorize this verse. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may be also, that we may also be glorified with him. So this verse is saying, that when the spirit inside bears with our spirit that we become children of God. This is a part of the salvation process, right? The spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then we're crafted in. So we're all children. We're all sons and daughters of God. We're all now a part of this family. And not just a part of this family, we're now heirs to the kingdom. We're now heirs, co-heirs with Christ, right? And it's and, and you see this imagery used repeatedly. And so when we see Jesus call her daughter, I, I, I think that's very intentional, right? That's very intentional. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. The deeper issue that if we're considering our infirmities, considering our shortcomings, considering our own sin, and Jesus dealing with people all throughout this series, constantly reminding them, I don't just deal with the physical. I'm also dealing with the spiritual. He's also dealing with the sin issue. He's also dealing with the internal infirmities that we deal with because we're tainted by sin, because we're broken creatures. And that when we we, we, we can just grasp onto a little bit of Jesus, we're then grafted in by grace through faith to be heirs of this kingdom, of this incredible kingdom, of something that we don't deserve, right? Like she didn't, she didn't, deserve anything. She just had faith and pursued Jesus and was healed because of it. And in the same way, when we place our faith in Jesus, that there's a spiritual healing that happened, and it's even better than just, just a healing, like it's a, it's a restoration, it's a regeneration, it's a renewal that happens from the inside out. And it's a beautiful picture of us now, instead of being hostile to God, instead of being enemies to the, to godly things, right? That now we are crafted in and we are children. We are sons and daughters. And I, th I think the sooner we realize that we are sons and daughters, that we are not, we don't have to perform for God. We don't have to do all of this other elaborate stuff for God, that we, we, we could just abide and be present. And so I then went and looked up the word abide. And that word abide doesn't mean to perform. It doesn't mean to do a bunch of bunch of stuff. It just means to be present. It just means to to be present with God. It means to wait on God. I love that scene, man. I think they did an incredible job. And I, I loved, even afterwards, how, how Dallas drove it home to salvation. Hey, this clip is from our daily after-party stream. If you enjoyed it, consider signing up for our Patreon community for only $5 a month, where you get access to the replays of our daily after-party streams, as well as the uncut extended versions of our podcast, Discord access that's private, and a discount code for our merch store, only $5 a month. And ultimately, it's the best way to help us conceptualize the gospel of Jesus using media, podcasting, and of course, YouTube. The link for that is in the description or in the pinned comment. The perks are amazing. You should get on there. It's only $5 a month. I'll see you over there, all right? Peace.